Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a neat little modeling trick that you can use with subdivision surfaces to avoid pinching when modeling certain details into curved surfaces. Some people have asked me to uh, record my keyboard shortcuts and I'm using Camtasia Studio to uh, record my videos and Camtasia can record shortcuts but it's uh, very incomplete and it doesn't always show all the shortcuts so I looked for a program that would do what I actually need and I found one and I hope you'll find it useful. I'm not sure how helpful this will be because I'm using a lot of custom shortcuts. I don't like many of the Cinema 4D default ones because they're really uncomfortable to work with. And also I'm working on a German keyboard, which means that depending on which country you're from, you won't have certain special characters or some of the characters and keys may be at different positions. Like, um, let's do a quick example before we get started. If I add a cube, you can see I just left click to add a cube and it shows that down there at the bottom of my screen. I'm going to use C to make this editable and I'm going to use axis center and you can see the character I'm using twice to bring axis center up. You don't have that on English keyboards, for example. And I can move the axis down, execute Shift W to close that window and tab one, which is reset position scale and rotation for me. There is no Cinema 4D default shortcut for that as far as I know. And I'm using that to put the object on the floor. And then I can switch to edge mode, for example, uh, switch to select this edge and switch to the world coordinate system. I can move this edge down holding shift and you can see everything I'm doing down here in this black little window and I can switch on snapping, grab my move tool and use axis extension to snap this edge back here. Ring select these edges here, use connect points edges to connect them, grab my move tool, double click on one of these edges to select the loop and dissolve them using another shortcut. And this again for connect points edges, it's this arrow key. Feel free to use whatever shortcut you want. You can customize your shortcuts. I hope you know that. So like I said, I'm not really sure how helpful this will actually be for you. I am always trying to tell you what I'm currently doing and all of the tools are shown here in the heads up display on the right side of my viewport anyway. So you can always see them here, but for commands like connect points edges, these won't show up here. This, uh, this area only shows the last tools that you used, but not commands. So if I double click here and use dissolve to get rid of these edges, this is not showing up here because it's a command and not a tool. And whenever you get stuck, you can always hit shift C to bring up the commander. And if you don't know where connect points edges it is, you can enter this term here and then double click to execute the command. Right now it didn't do anything because I didn't have anything selected. But if I do that again with the edges selected, connect points edges, double click, and I will get this edge loop here. I'm going to dissolve these edges again and we can use this cube. We're going to do three simple examples and what we're going to do is we're going to model um, a square hole into a curved surface and square holes actually are more difficult than round ones because we need control edges to sharpen the corners and that's something that can be quite tricky to do on a curved surface when you, when you use uh, subdivision surfaces. So what I'm going to do with this cube is I'm going to delete these points in the corner here in my right view and switch back to my perspective view, grab this edge here and I'm going to bevel it. Let's do something like this maybe and add a couple of subdivisions. And let's say we want a square hole right on this curve. And this is quite tricky to do with subdivision surfaces. Now we need a little extra uh, geometry to be able to pull this off, but we don't need a whole lot of geometry. One of the advantages of the trick that I'm going to show you is that you can start really low poly 
and you can create geometry that actually wouldn't work just with subdivision surfaces, but we're going to make it work using the shrink wrap deformer. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to ring select these edges and use edge cut. Let me just do that again. So ring select these edges here and use edge cut. And I'll just add a couple of edges, maybe five subdivisions is fine. And this is going to be our base mesh. And for the base mesh, you can't just use anything. You should try and create a mesh that makes sense. So I'm going to do something like this maybe here and add a couple of edges down here as well. So we get more or less even topology here. And I'm going to make a copy. And this will be the object where we're going to do our detail. And this will be the target object for the shrink wrap deformer. And in order for this to work, I'm going to use the loop cut tool and just add a couple of control edges. And my viewport is a little bit choppy, which may be because of Camtasia, or maybe it's because of that program that records the shortcuts. So not sure. So something like this. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to subdivide it. And let's hide this for now. So this is going to be our target. And you want a lot of geometry on the target. The more geometry you have, the better shrink wrapping will work. So this actually should be enough, but I'm going to crank this up to three maybe. And we can hide this. So let's grab our low poly object here and switch to polygon mode. And I'm going to add a square or rectangular detail here. Let's use extrude inner because we do want to create a polygon loop around that detail. And I'm going to delete these polygons and optimize the object. And next we need control edges to sharpen these corners. And I'm going to do these in a way that I usually wouldn't do the control edges. And what I mean by this is this. So I'm going to use the loop cut tool and create my control edges like this. And you don't really want to do this usually because for one thing, if you don't need the edges running all across the surface, you should, you should avoid doing that. And also with a curved surface, edge loops like uh, the ones I cut here will not work because the surface is curved and we need an even distribution of edges. But in this case, we'll make it work with the shrink wrap deformer as I'm going to show you in a second. So we have this object here. Now, if we subdivide that, it's not going to look too good. We're getting these creases here because subdivision surfaces usually don't work like that. So Usually what we would have to do is we would have to make sure that we create enough geometry to be able to add sharp corners to this cutout here. However, for the trick I'm going to show you, we won't need a lot of geometry and we can even use this type of topology that I usually wouldn't do. And what we're going to do with this object is we're going to shrink wrap it onto our target object. So let's go ahead and add a shrink wrap deformer as a child and the shrink wrap deformer needs a target object and that's the one we created earlier and which is called target so let's drag this in here you can see the geometry change a little bit as it adjusts to the the topology of the target object now if i switch on the sds object you won't see anything change. We still have these creases in here. And the reason is because the hierarchy is wrong. We need to do this differently. So let's drag the shrink wrap out of here, select both of these objects and group them. And not sure if you saw that, if I switch that off, you can see the geometry change again a little bit. But this time, if I render, we're getting a perfectly nice and smooth surface. If I make a copy of this and drag it over and switch off the shrink wrap deformer here, you can see the difference. 
So here we're getting the creases and here we don't. So perfectly nice and smooth surface and we have a detail that would actually not be that easy to do on a surface like this. Let me delete these and I'm going to use the backup cube that I made earlier. Now usually I would create my control edges a little bit differently. This loop here is fine, but what we need, what I would do to sharpen these corners is a slightly different technique. You've seen me do this plenty of times in other tutorials. I'm just going to delete one half of this object here. So what I'm going to do is select these two points and connect them. Same down here. I'll connect these two points and then use the knife tool. I'll just do this quickly to create edges like this. And then we can dissolve these ones. This will give us quads. And the topology is a little bit better than it was in my first example. But still, you know, because we have this curved surface here and because we don't have a whole lot of geometry, this usually is not working too well and I'll show you why in just a second. Let me just add the control edges here like this and let's dissolve these edges and subdivide the object. Now this is looking slightly better up here but on the corners you can still see the pinching. So we still have this problem simply because we have very small polygons here and then we have edges that are very close together and then we have these much bigger polygons where the distance between the edges is a lot bigger and on a curved surface that will inevitably create pinching and highlights and we don't want that so we can use the same trick we did before i'm going to group this into a null object and add a shrink wrap deformer as a child of the null object, not as a child of the cube or the subdivision surface object, but as a child of the null object. And again, we're going to use our target and maybe I should also uh, put this in the symmetry object. I'm going to make this editable. Okay, so, and again, we're getting a nice and smooth surface and the topology this time is a little bit better than it was before. So you can create this with very few polygons and use a subdivision, a combination of a subdivision surface object and the shrink wrap deformer to project this geometry onto a high res base mesh to create something that is free of pinching. And this is looking pretty good. And you can turn this into editable geometry by selecting the null objects and using current state to object. And then you could add more details. And I would probably also clean up the mesh a little bit. You can change the iterations for the subdivisions. By default, it's two for the editor and three for the renderer. You can go lower if you want to or higher. In any case, the subdivision renderer is what you need to what you need to be changing once you make this editable because that's the setting that Cinema 4D will use when it converts the object to editable geometry. In this case, I would probably stick with, with two and then use current state to object. And then we have an editable mesh and I would probably clean this up a little bit because there's uh, a couple of edges that we don't need. Okay, so you can do all sorts of things. The nice thing about this also is as long as it's still parametric, you can change other things too. For example, we could select these points here and move them over and we would still get a perfect surface because everything is shrink wrapped onto our target object here. So even more complex shapes are doable with this technique and uh, you can do them and you can do these changes and get a real-time update and it's going to look just fine and beautiful and stuff like this would be a lot more difficult to do without this technique. Okay, so that was the curved corner. I'll just hide this. Actually, I'm going to 
not hide it, but put it in another null object and hide that. And let's move on to the next example, which is also a very typical for modeling a cylinder. Let's remove the caps and I'll make this a little bit bigger. And again, I'm going to make this fairly low poly. Let's do 16 segments and let's add a couple of height segments here, something like this maybe. And again, this is going to be our target object. I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to subdivide the target object. Let's rename this. And let's grab this one, make it editable. And I'm going to select some polygons here in the front view. And again, I'm going to do a square cutout, which is more difficult because we need to sharpen these corners and we need additional geometry here. And the amount of the of geometry that we have right now would never be enough to actually create a clean model using subdivision surfaces. So let's create our loop around the detail by extruding these polygons inner and let's delete these polygons, optimize the object. And again, I'm going to do my loop cuts. And again, I usually wouldn't do, do them like this. But just to prove that this will work with the shrink wrap deformer. And let's go ahead and add insult to injury by adding an additional edge here. And this is terrible topology for a subdividing because if I use a subdivision surface object here, this is how it's going to look. And it's perfectly fine because that's how subdivisions work. But in order to get a clean surface, we would need, you know, evenly spread edges to keep the cylindrical. And we would need a lot more geometry to create this cutout here. Eventually, of course, we, we will end up with more geometry, but we can start really low poly and then, like before, use shrink wrap to turn this into a nice and clean object. So let's go ahead and subdivide this and let's put it in a null object and let's add a shrink wrap deformer and let's select our target. I'm going to crank up the subdivisions again to make this really high res. And I'm going to drag this into the slot for the target object in my shrink wrap deformer. And if you watch, you can see the geometry adjust and we're getting a really nice and clean object here without any pinching. And stuff like this is perfect for doing arched windows on towers, stuff like that. So really cool, really easy and uh, we're, we're getting really nice results here. I'm going to group these, hide them, and we'll do one more example. They all work the same, but uh, that is just to show you that you can do this on basically any object. And the technique is always the same. You need your base geometry, so that's what you would prepare first. And you would subdivide the base geometry and use a copy of that base geometry to create the details and shrink wrap it onto the target object. Now this sphere, I'm, for this sphere, I'm going to use 12 segments. So I'm, again, I'm going to make this really low poly and I'm going to switch it to a hexahedron to make it all quads, which will be better for use with subdivision surfaces. So let's make a copy of this. And let's subdivide this. This is going to be our target. Let's crank up the subdivisions. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, three should actually be enough. You can crank it up to four if you want to. It doesn't really matter. If your scene is too complex, this might slow down your computer, but for this example, it should be fine. And again, I'm going to hide it. And I'll make this object editable. Let's do a square cutout here. And like before, I'm going to use extrude inner to create a polygon loop around this area here. And let's delete the polygons, optimize the object. 
and again I'll make a copy and then use the loop knife to create control cuts like this just do these quickly without paying too much attention to making these even or anything and of course if we subdivide this it's going to look really bad so we need the subdivision surface object anyway so might as well have kept it um, next we're going to group this subdivision surface object and add our shrink wrap deformer and we're going to add our target here and we will get a perfectly nice and smooth surface without pinching although like I said before the topology as it is really wouldn't support this this kind of object but it's we can make it work with the shrink wrap deformer okay so and just to show you again how I would do the corners I would avoid having the edges propagate throughout the entire mesh but because this is such a low poly object cutting the corners like this is actually not going to help that much because we don't have enough geometry to support this kind of detail let's go ahead and delete part of the object and then use symmetry let's switch that second one to XZ and let's make this editable subdivide this and put it in a null object and let's add a shrink wrap deformer and where's our target I think it's this one okay and there we go again we're getting a nice and smooth surface the topology now is looking a lot better okay really nice switching back to wireframe and we can make or we can turn this into editable geometry by using current state to object and then we can process this further this is a lot of geometry I didn't mean to create that much so let's bring this down to 2 for the subdivision renderer and this should be a little bit better still enough geometry to create smaller details now and of course we could clean this up by removing some of the edges here so this is the end of this tutorial I hope you found it useful thanks for watching everyone take care and I'll see you again soon